Oh, welcome dear students. So, today we move on to the uh, fourth module in the subject environmental impact assessment. So, in this module these are the topics that will be discussed impact of pollutants, types, scale of impact, global and local pollutants, climate change, ozone layer depletion, deforestation, land degradation, impact of development on vegetation and wildlife. So, in today's class we will be discussing what are the different types of uh, impact of pollutants as well as the scale of impact. So, we know that uh, the various activities that occur in nature and uh, the environment like the human activities and other natural processes will release various chemicals and other pollutants into the atmosphere which leads to various types of pollution. And uh, the impact of these pollutants can range from uh, say very poor air quality uh, in the close vicinity of the source that is the source from which the pollutant is released to the disruption of the natural chemical cycles and the physical processes that occur on a global scale. Now, the environmental impacts that arise from any development project or any other activities in the environment may be categorized into three types. The impacts uh, may be uh, categorized into three types. They are the direct impact, indirect impact and the cumulative impact. Uh, again, these impacts also can further be grouped or divided into uh, it may be either positive or a negative impact. So, the impact can be a positive impact or it may be a negative impact. It can be a random or a predictable impact and local or widespread. It may be just a localized impact or it can be uh, spread throughout a wider area. Also, the impacts may be either uh, for a long duration or a short duration like we can say it can be a short term impact or a long term impact. Now, coming to the types like I said you there are three types the direct impact, indirect impact and the cumulative impact. So, we will see what are they. So, direct impact actually occurs through direct interaction of an activity with an environment social or economic component. So, direct means the impact is direct. Uh, now, for example, suppose there is a discharge of any waste from an industry. Now, we know that every industry has a treatment plant. So, the waste uh, that is uh, generated from industries will be treated in the ETP, we call it as effluent treatment plant. And these waste, after it is being processed, what happens? From the industrial estates, they will be uh, discharged into water bodies like say a river, etcetera. So, this may lead to a decline in the quality of the water. So, the water in which the waste from the industries are discharged can see that there be a decline or a reduction in the quality of the water and also there may be a high biological oxygen demand or a dissolved oxygen or etcetera. So, also there may be a rise in the increase of uh, toxins or poisons in the water which might affect the quality of the water as well as the uh, organisms or uh, whatever the vegetation etcetera that is present in the water. So, this type of an impact we call it as a direct impact. Now, coming to the indirect impact. So, indirect impact means uh, indirect Im impact actually this is uh, these are those which are not uh, as a direct result of the project and it is uh, actually uh, such impacts are produced away from as a result of a complex uh, impact pathway. So, it may not be uh, direct impact, but in this case the impact will be indirect like we say the primary pollutants and the secondary pollutants. The second pro secondary pollutants are actually derived from the primary po pollutants. Similarly, here indirect impact means it is something which does not result from a direct uh, 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 from a direct action, but it is it occurs somewhere uh, or it is produced away from a uh, from from or as a result of the complex impact pathway. And the direct impacts are also uh, we call it also as the secondary or even we can call it as a third level impact. So, it is not a direct even it is not a direct impact we call it as an indirect impact. For example, suppose um, uh, uh, like uh, indirect impact uh, like in the decline in the water quality due to the rise in temperature of water bodies. Sometimes there may be a, a rise or increase in the temperature of water bodies that receive cooling water from the nearby industry. So, sometimes there may be cool water that will be released to the uh, water bodies 
and once this water body uh, releases there will be a rise or variation in the temperature. So, such an impact we can classify it as an indirect impact and uh, also this may lead to a secondary indirect impact on the aquatic uh, flora that is present in the water body and also it can cause the reduction in the population of the fish. So, when the fish that is in water is affected by these pollutants there may be a reduction in the uh, population of the fish also uh, harvesting of the fish will be affected and also the, uh, we can say that it, uh, the third, there is a third level impact on the fishermen. So, the fishermen will be the one they will be uh, collecting the fish from the pond. So, when there is uh, from the river or whatsoever. So, whenever there is a reduction in the population it indirectly imp uh, also affects the fishermen. So, then that comes to as a third level impact. So, such impacts we call it as a indirect impact and they are characterized as socio-economic or th third level impacts. So, this is about the indirect impact. Also indirect impact can also include the growth uh, inducing impacts and other effects related to the induced changes to the pattern of the land use or the additional road network then the population density or the growth rate. So, these are all uh, classified as indirect impacts. Now, coming to the cumulative impact. So, cumulative impacts uh, it actually consists of an impact which is created as a result of the combination of the project evaluated in the environmental impact assessment together with other projects uh, which cause related impacts. So, any other project which uh, causes the same or uh, related impacts when we combine this we call it as a cumulative impact and these impacts actually occur when the incremental impact of the project is combined with the cumulative uh, effects of other may be it may be a past uh, uh, or uh, past project or something which is present or reasonably it can be a foreseeable future project. So, this we call it as a cumulative impact. So, uh, these impacts can also be due to the induced actions of the projects and the activities that may occur if the action that is under assessment is implemented. Suppose, we are going to implement a project, uh, what are the accumulative, uh, what are the in induced effect of that project. So, when then we can say that such a type of uh, impact is a cumulative impact and uh, they usually have no direct relationship with the action which is actually under assessment or the EIA is done for a particular project. So, uh, this uh, they will not have a direct relationship with the uh, action that is under assessment and it represents the growth inducing potential of any action. So, this is called as a cumulative impact. Now, uh, coming to the impact evaluation. So, impact evaluation is actually done to identify the major activities of the project. So, when whenever a project is being uh, initiated, we have to identify what are the major activities uh, that is related to the project. Then we have to select the environment components like the air, uh, water, the ecosystem etcetera, which may be affected by the project. Then again we have to select the type of impact whether it is a direct impact, whether it is indirect or whether it is a cumulative impact. After that we have to assess the possibility or the probability or likely uh, the occurrence of each impact, what are the probabilities or possibility that it can occur. Then determine the degree and the time frame of the impact. So, we have to determine for how long the uh, impact is time frame whether it is a short term or a long term effect as well as the degree of the impact. Uh, and then we can also designate the impact as a positive impact or a negative impact. Like I told you the direct or indirect or cumulative impact may also be uh, classified as uh, it can be positive or negative, random and predictable or it can be a local or a widespread impact or it can be a short term or a long term impact. So, this is how the impact evaluation is done. Next uh, moving on to the scale of impact. So, according to the geographic range of influence we can uh, classify or uh, we can uh, divide the scale of impact into three scales. Firstly the macro scale then we have the meso scale and then the micro scale. So, what do you mean by macro uh, scale? So, macro scale means this phenomenon uh, actually occurs on scales of thousands of kilometers. So, it is for a range of thousands of kilometers and uh, normally these pollutants are like the ozone, 
the uh, greenhouse gases, CFCs, etc. So, all these are uh, coming under the macro scale of impact. And also, one other example of macro scale pollution are the, uh, the we say the global climate change, the ozone layer uh, depletion, ocean currents, etc. So, all these uh, can be classified as a macro scale. And also, the primary elements uh, that influence the impacts will be the uh, movement of the air, the air movement, then the topography of the land, the pressure, the temperature, solar radiation, etc. So, these are the elements that influence the impacts in a macro scale. Now, coming to a uh, meso scale impact. So, meso scale impact means it is also called as a secondary or regional impacts. So, these actually happens over regional geographical units uh, because of the influence of the uh, of particular region or a particular locality or a particular topography. And uh, it occurs or it, this also occurs on scales of say hundreds of kilometers and the pollutants can be like uh, temperature, uh, oxides of nitrogen, oxides of uh, sulfur, photo oxidants etcetera and also particulate sol particulate matters. And also uh, examples for this is urban heat islands, then for example, the Delhi smog etcetera, these are not meso scale impacts. Now, uh, coming to the micro scale impacts. So, micro scale impacts are actually local impacts and this will uh, this actually occurs uh, over a, a very less area say less than 10 kilometers. Uh, for example, dispersion of uh, smoke or fumes from chimneys, then water quality degradation uh, especially at the point of discharge of uh, waste into the water bodies and also the pollutants are like the oxides of nitrogen and sulfur, then particulate matter, uh, biological oxygen demand and organics and other pharmaceuticals etcetera. So, these are the different scales of impact. So, uh, this is about the types of uh, impact and also the scale of impact. So, in the next class we will be discussing uh, the uh, climate change, ozone layer depletion, deforestation and other topics. Thank you.